Hello everyone, someone recently asked how could they spawn a player in different locations based on a menu button press and so today we're going to look into how we would set that up and hopefully it goes pretty quickly. Alright, let's get started. First thing first, we're going to create a new folder that we're going to work in. We're going to call this uh, menu teleport. I don't know, that's not the best name, but we're just going to go with that. Then we're going to want to create a widget. So go into user interface, widget blueprint, and we're just going to create a user widget. We're going to call this OV um, tele menu teleport, teleporter, sure. Bust that open. And it's taken a while. My computer's been slow lately, which is annoying. Bring up here, we're going to say, okay, let's just do a canvas panel, keep it simple. It's not entirely necessary because we don't need to use a whole screen, but we'll just do this because it's easy. Throw a button in there, go over to the top right. We want to anchor it, let's just say left middle for now, and we'll make this 100 and zero this out. Let's make the size, sure, 200 and then 20. Nope, 30. It doesn't really matter. We just want it to be a button that works. Make sure it's a variable. Let's just give it a name that's easier to remember. Call it teleport. And actually, since we want to be able to teleport to different locations, probably with different buttons, let's make a few. So I'm going to make a vertical box. Let's see, drop that. Just stretch that out. And if you go over here, you want to put your button in your vertical box like that. We're going to go add some text to it. Child that to the button and we'll say that the text, text is, uh, let's just say location one. And then we'll take that Highlight the button teleport above that and we're going to duplicate it by right clicking, go to duplicate and we're going to call this one teleport two. Make sure that this one says one just to make things simpler. Go into the text of the second button, turn that to two so we know what we're looking at. Maybe give it some padding above. So if you open the padding menu, you can go top and you can say like, okay, we want 20 padding. Uh, let's go 50. No, not the, okay, my bad. Not the text padding, we want the button padding. Say 20, and that'll just give you some spacing here. Compile that, and if you scroll down, you can see you got these on-clicked events for your buttons. We're gonna want to click on the plus sign for that, and that'll tell us what we do. So we're gonna go print string, we're gonna say button one, or location one, Go back into designer, click our second button, scroll down to on clicked. We're going to print another string. Let's just copy this one. Do, do, do. And we're going to say that is location two. Let's make this green for visual differences. Now that we've got our widget, we need to be able to add that to our game. So. In your, let's go in our player controller. If you go down to third person, I'm in a third person map, but whatever type of map you're in, find your player controller. For me, that's in third person blueprints, third person controller. Um, this is from a previous tutorial, so I'll try to hide that. Looks like there's no way around that. Um, ignore this. So here we're gonna say create widget. You're going to select your, what do we call it, teleport menu or something, menu teleporter. Once you do that, you want to drag off this little return value, say add to screen. That doesn't feel right, but I guess it is. I could have sworn it was add to player, I swear it was add to viewport. Yeah. So I usually am used to using add to viewport. Player screen probably has like some specific rule, but I think either work. So let's just use add to viewport for consistency. Now, if you go and hit play, we got our buttons. And when you click them, 
it'll tell you each location. All right, good. So now the next step is, is we want to set our locations for spawns. You can either do this manually by like going in here and hand typing these out. But what we're going to do is we're going to create an actor and then get that location. So back in our menu teleporter folder, go in, create a new blueprint class, just create an actor, call it BP spawn marker. All right. And so now we've got our spawn marker. Mm, so we can either just get the location of it directly or we could actually put a location in. Let's just do this for the sake of, I don't know, doing it, putting something in this uh, spawn marker. So let's go spawn location, make it a vector. This is actually very unnecessary, but we're doing it. We're doing it live. So then what we want to do is like, okay, where do you want to spawn this dude? You can put this, say like up here will be spawn location one. And then uh, copy and paste that. And we'll move that over here. Call that spawn location two. Maybe we'll rotate it. Sure. And we got our spawn markers in our outliner. You might as well right click them and like create a new folder for them. Which, where is it? Create new folder in the move to, and we'll just call this like our spawn. Spawns. Spawn location. Span. Spawn locations. Cool. So we got two locations so far. Now we need to get those locations. And as I was saying before, they have them in their details. Like you can just use this, but if you wanted to like to add their custom locations, like I did with that vector variable, that's just there in case you want to like do an offset or something. I don't know. Double it up. So where are we at? So let's get these locations and we'll connect it in our widget. You could also do it in your controller if you want to. That just would be a few more steps. So to make, keep it simple, we're going to do it in our widget. Let's see. Do we have a begin play in our widget? We don't, but we have construct. So construct will work. So once the widget is constructed, what we want to do is get all the locations of those spawn markers. So what we're going to do is you get all actors of class. And this is not a fast operation, but if you're just doing it once and there's only a few things, like it's not a big deal at all. So just something to keep in mind. We call them spawn markers. So this will return an array of our spawn markers. We're going to grab this. We can say for each loop. We're going to loop through each one. We're going to get the element and we're going to say Actually, let's do this. In our, back in our spawn marker, we could, we don't have to do this, but uh, just for practice. We'll do this for practice. We'll create a custom event. This is overkill, but get location. I'm going to collapse that to a function, and that's called get location. Let me delete that. And we want to return our location. So we're actually going to return both. Keep this simple. So that's the custom spawn location if you wanted to do an offset, which you don't, but you might. Then it will do, let's get this default seat root and get location, get world location. We're going to plug this in as well. And we're going to call that world spawn location. They're basically, they're the same thing, but I'm just showing you multiple ways to get a location at this point. You can also back in our menu teleporter, you can just go like this and say, get world location. And that'll get, that'll do just what that custom function is doing. So if you say get location with, this is the function we just made that will return the two locations that we are asking it, which right now are the same because the custom spawn location is just zero, which means it's attached to this thing, which is also going to be like, you know, the center of it. So anyway, multiple ways of doing something. This is probably the easiest, but I just want to add this because 
I don't know, I just got this feeling it might help you understand a little bit more. Okay, so we got our locations. Now what do we want to do? We're going to add, uh, what do we want to do? I'm going to have to pause this and think for a little bit. All right, so we got our locations and now we want to create an array. So let's create an array of vectors. We'll call this spawn locations and vector create that as an array by clicking that and making the little grid box. So we're going to get that array and we want to add to it. I'm going to add unique. You don't need, uh, no, we don't need that, but you can use add unique. So let's get our world spawn location. This is what I get for making it a little more confusing. Yeah, we want just our world, which that is exactly the same as this, but don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to delete that. So that'll add each marker to our spawn location. And for funsies, let's just do print string. And we'll plug that into there and that should show us our location. We'll give it five seconds, make it yellow because vectors are yellow in this process or program. Hit play. And now those are the two spawn locations. They both have the same Z height somehow, which is actually pretty crazy. I guess I did copy and paste them, but I could have sworn I lowered it. Anyway, so that's what I get for copy pasting. All right, so we got our two locations in there. We know that the, actually we don't know. We need to check their names just to be sure. So let's get their names. I think it's get display name is usually the thing. Yeah, okay, copy this. We're gonna print display name. Make that pink. And so now we'll know the location and the name. If we hit play, spawn marker and spawn marker two. Cool, so it does go in order for what we wanted. So now that we know their locations, we know which one's which, we know that we can get spawn location one Actually, if you think about it, since the one was on top, that might be the last one. Oh, great. Anyway, so we might be doing this backwards, but it doesn't really matter. So we want to say, what do we think? We click a button, teleport one. We want to go to location one. So let's just get, we know the order roughly, although our order might be backwards. We're getting the index of zero from the spawn location. And then this one we'll get, oops, I already copied that. We'll get index one, boom. So these will be our two locations that we already kind of set up. And what do we want to do? We want to do the thing. We want to teleport our player to that spot. So that's going to be a little bit trickier since once we hit play, the player will already have, already have spawned in. We might be able to move player spot, but we probably just have to move the player location. So let's, let's do that. So let's get the player location and to do that, we're going to get the player controller, which this will be index zero for a single player game. We want to get their pawn, our controlled pawn. And that's like the actor, or the, yeah, the actor that they're controlling, the pawn that they're controlling. And I think we can just go set world location, world transform. That's a message, I don't like that. Um, move to maybe, teleport, what is it? We want to get, let's get their default scene. Nope, get capsule maybe. We have to cast. So let's cast to third person character so we know what we're working with. Do do do. As third person character, we want to get their capsule. Scroll down. Component. 
So if we move the capsule component, it should move the entire character since they're of the hierarchy. And we're gonna say set world location, do, do, do. And we're going to use our little spawn location, get location zero. We're going to copy and paste this. You can make this a function if you wanted, but literally we're only doing two right now, so no need. It's easier to just copy and paste, but if you're gonna make like five of these, you might wanna make it a function. Should we teleport? Sure. I don't know how much that matters. It's just a physics thing. Okay, let's test it. Location one, location two, nice. So we didn't get the rotations, but that's because you have to set the rotations and yeah. So that is how you use a menu button to teleport your player to different locations on your map. I hope that answers your question. If you were wanting to like teleport to different locations on different maps, that's actually a different process, but it's a pretty similar idea. So using the information I presented to you in this tutorial, I hope it answers your question and helps more than one of you. Have fun. Oh yeah, like the video, subscribe, and give me ideas for more tutorials, ask me questions. I'm trying to make more videos and tutorials. It's kind of, as long as I'm having fun with it and feel like it's useful to you out there sitting in front of your screen, building projects, making cool things, going crazy. Yeah, let's do this. Hit me up. I'm serious. Slap that like, slap that follow, slap that ass. Later.